I feel very proud when my kids say, wow, mom, you can do this and this and this. Exactly. If you are a male or a female, it doesn't have to be any, any difference. And especially in our society, that it seems that it's only looked from a male, uh, you know, side. And it says, no, my goodness, we can do many things. This is Running For Real, the podcast for runners who know that for every runner's high, there are just as many lows. All those just missed PRs, easy runs that feel hard, injury blues, and more. Each week, we'll talk to running, health, and wellness experts about their highs, lows, and best advice to build our confidence. Running For Real is about being honest, being brave, and most of all, not feeling alone. And now here's our host, Tina Muir. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode 215 of the Running Field podcast. And this is our fifth episode in my Eco Challenge series, World's Toughest Race, Fiji. And I hope you are enjoying these episodes. I loved recording them. I loved getting to know these people. And I know it's not 100% focused on running. I do try to tie running into every episode and you will, well, you're probably hearing that each guest has some kind of tie to running, particularly my guest today. She is primarily a runner by trade. She is an ultra athlete and has a lot to share. But I wanted to go beyond just our sport because there is a lot of interest in in learning about other things. I know many of you are always trying to find ways to to incorporate more sports into your activities, to look for more ways to find joy. And running is always going to be a big part of any sport, any ultra event that people do. But I thought this would be a great way for us to kind of think outside the box to consider adventure racing. Because I have to admit, after watching this series, I was a little bit curious. All these events looked like a lot of fun. Uh, They looked like they kind of tied into runners very well and I know many of you have been interested and let alone the stories that we have been hearing up to this point and I have even more interesting and exciting stories to share with you in these final weeks. I am really excited to have you meet today Emma Roker. She is There's so many things I could say about her. I'm not going to spoil it in this intro because I want you to hear it in the episode and I can't think of many women in the world that I know of who inspire me more than Emma Roca. She has an amazing story. She has done so much. She's all about women's rights and and not not in the sense of I'm going to stuff this down your throat kind of sense, but just leading by example and her being the team captain of her team, Team Summit. It's just one of the best examples I could possibly think of. And I love that she does it with this humor and this just approach to life that is just fun. Uh, a wonderful person and I'm really excited for you to get to know her in this episode today. So we are just going to take a moment to thank our sponsor and we'll be right to the episode with Emma Roker. Thank you to MetPro for sponsoring this episode of the Running for a Podcast. Now, you may remember hearing my episodes with my guest, Angelo Poli, who is a body transformation expert, founder of MetPro, a concierge nutrition, fitness and lifestyle coaching company. When I first learned about this company, I told you I was a little bit skeptical, but I learned that they are not wanting you to guess what to do with your metabolism. The experts at MetPro are there for you to help you reach any goals or the struggles you might be going through. They've helped thousands of individuals transform their bodies by hacking their metabolism through concierge coaching. Over the years, MetPro has heard from people that they wish they could experience the benefits of the signature concierge coaching, but at a lower price. Now, I know that was a concern of many of you. I, you reached out to me and said, you know, this sounds great. I would love to have something like this in my life. And, and even in the little mini interviews that I did with Angelo, uh, as in my episodes, probably a year or so ago, I heard that from people saying, you know, it's great. It is, I found a way to work around my family and my life situation. You know, everything seems to work. This really would be great for me. However, I don't know if I can afford that price. Now the team at MetPro listened. They've been working diligently to bring you a MetPro algorithm in the palm of your hand. So today I'm excited to share their newest edition, their big news, which is the MetPro platform, an app that allows you to experience the same science and the same tailored strategy that their expert use. So something particularly special about what MetPro is doing for our audience is that you have a chance to be one of the first to experience it. This isn't a food logging tool or a workout app. The MetPro platform allows you to start tracking, analyzing, and learning what your metabolism responds to best. 
If you sign up using metpro.co forward slash Tina, you also get 14 days free. So you can go check it out. You can see what you think and then you will continue because you will love it. And I've checked out the app. I think they've done a fantastic job. A lot of the time, I think apps are kind of rushed together. But as with everything, Metpro really puts time, energy and thought into everything. And they really have done a great job with that app. So you can head to metpro, that's M-E-T-P-R-O dot C-O forward slash Tina to take advantage of your 14 days free. This is a special opportunity for Running For Real listeners. So I hope you will go check it out. I am excited to be working back with Metpro again because I think what they are offering is going to help so many of my listeners. And um, if you have not heard me talking about MetPro, I will be putting my episode with Angelo Poli in the show notes. So you can go listen, go learn a bit more. Don't worry, it's not one of those episodes where it's one giant ad. We, he answers your questions and the episodes following that, I will um, you will be able to find them as well. The episodes that we go through some of your questions that you submitted. So when I first started talking about MetPro, I was able to ask you what you thought and you gave me some suggestions and I asked Angelo in the episode. So go listen to that episode with Angelo Poli if you are unsure, but I really am excited about the MetPro platform. You can go to metpro.co forward slash Tina to get 14 days free. Emma, thank you so much for joining me today on the Running For Real podcast. I am... See, I feel bad saying this because I don't know if they're going to listen, but I'm probably the most excited to talk to you and I'll explain in just a minute. So out of all of my, these Eco Challenge episodes, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you to you also for your interest. <laughs> so I think the best way to start this off, and I just said that, and you know, that was quite a bold statement to kind of say this, that you were the one I was most excited for, but I want to explain some random person on the internet when I looked you up had tweeted just finished watching Eco Challenge Fiji. Amazing. I want to be at Emma Roka one when I grow up. <laughs> so Ryan Curtis Lee, I felt like you described how I was feeling perfectly. I have no idea who that person is, but you have a PhD in biochemistry. You have three businesses. You're a professional firefighter, an adventure racer, and you have kids. And I just, I, it doesn't even seem like it's a good enough question to ask, how do you do it? So instead, I'm going to ask you, are you human? Because I can't wrap my brain around how that's possible to do all of that. Yes, yes. I'm human and I have my mistakes and I have my crisis. Like, I cannot. But uh, I have a very good thing that is a good time. Very, I have a family. I have a big team uh, surrounding me. I have three marvelous kids that they don't have any illness problems they just do they have a good education so they help me also mm -hmm. but above that i have my motivation i'm very focused on what i am choosing to do every day mm -hmm. and with the firefighter service i work 24 hours so i am free 72 these three days free I can do many things. Yeah, Other true. firefighters just stay at home or just play some sport or just relax and do nothing. No, I am not like this. And then <laughs> my three days free are all full of things. And when the kids are at school, I do many things. I train every day. I have a discipline in my life, but I'm relaxed with that. So because the things I do, I love them. And then for me, it's not a big effort mm -hmm. what I'm doing every day because uh, I enjoy it. Yes. And so my husband is with me, my kids also, the grandpas and grandmas also help sometimes when you have to go to, well, in, in Echo Challenge. And yeah. uh, me and my husband, he got the assistant. So we, we had oh, one Oh, he went month. with you? Okay. Yes, he, oh, was, wow. yes, he was the assistant of Team Summit. So mm, the, the grandma and grandpa... Uh, where with the kids the whole month so also this is is really helpful yeah very very fortunate to have that I actually have my mother-in-law here right now and I'm very fortunate for having a little break to where I can uh, get a few things done and you mentioned there about uh, that 72 hours to do whatever you like to do how do, how do you work sleep into that are you someone who can get away with less sleep do you make sure okay I'll get my eight hours here, but then the rest of the time I'm either with my kids or following my joy. How do you, how do you figure sleep into that recovery time? Well, in fact, uh, if we have any service at night, 
then I have one day more to recover. So <laughs> the three days free disappear. <laughs> so I I one day to recover and then have two days free. But normally I try to sleep seven hours, mm -hmm. uh, but sometimes it's impossible. In fact, finishing my PhD, many, many weeks I was sleeping five hours for just finishing the papers and everything. So it was really stressful and it had uh, their consequences because, you know, when you don't sleep properly, you train, you have a big backpack with you every day and in your free time, <laughs> just writing in my in, in some of, of, of my work time, uh, firefighters are in the, in the sofa uh, looking at TV. I don't know how is the sofa. I don't know if it's comfortable or not. <laughs> I never was sitting on there because I was taking time from there also to finish things without the kids going around and going around me and asking me because then the, the, most of the time that I was con Centri I was focused and with mm, any disturb or anything was at night at home mm -hmm. because they were sleeping. So my my real sleeping time in these last years was not quite good. <laughs> yes, I, I mean I can imagine uh, that would, something would have to give to uh, to to manage to get that all done. And 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 with that, do you, do you ever struggle with? Um, kind of feeling like you're burning out because of not having that kind of downtime or have you is the joyful things even if they're exercise uh enough to kind of give you a bit of a reset i need to do exercise every day it's it's the way that i can uh feel free take all my anxious uh all my anxiety and all my uh, nervous mm -hmm. part uh, without sport i think i i would die for sure, without any any physical activity, and then the objectives, the goals, the ultra marathons, the adventure races, I have to be fit there. But don't stress. See, if I cannot do the training that week as expected, keep calm. Mm -hmm. Adventure racing, it's keep on going. You don't have to be fast. You have to be well mindset. You have to have a, a good feed and 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 concern that you will suffer. So. It's a good training, also, also ultra racing. I know that I have to train 15 hours per week minimum. Mm -hmm. And some periods I train 20 and 25, some specific periods of time. But I do a lot of biking, I swim, and with adventure racing, I also paddle. So you can combine many disciplines because if you only run, then it's very easy to get injured. And for for me, that it, it makes me more relaxed that, okay, Emma, you have this time, I'm very concerned about because the, the best, when you don't have much time, the best discipline is running. Mm -hmm. With one hour and one and a half, you have a good running. But it's not my case. I have to take more time for biking, and especially for Eco Challenge paddling, that we are not uh, a water country where I live. I live in the Pyrenees. Yep. So then you need to take the car and, and lose more time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so... You said there about, you know, doing multiple disciplines and you are a runner as well, primarily, uh, well, not primarily, but it's one of your main focuses. Um, mm -hmm. Now, most the audience are going to be primarily runners. And you mentioned there about doing all the other, these other disciplines, how it's helping you. But yeah, you kind of mentioned there towards the end about if you have a short amount of time, running is the thing to go to. So for someone listening who is maybe interested in doing some kind of adventure race in the future, but for now their time is so limited. Let's say they've got seven hours a week or five hours a week. Would you say uh, as a runner yourself for, for now during this kind of busy stage of life to just stick to running? Or do you think it helps to add in some swimming and biking as well instead of some of those runs? I think if they want to do adventure racing, they need to put more things, not only running, for sure. Mm -hmm. And with seven hours a week, then don't do uh, races too long. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> half a marathon. If I have seven hours, if you have 10, 15, a marathon. If you have 15, 20, an ultra marathon. But if not, your goals have to be lower mm -hmm. because then your body is not prepared and you also have anxiety to, I cannot uh, no, uh, achieve enough. Mm -hmm. that, that, uh, that I need and also for your body it's not healthy then for adventure racing if you only have seven hours uh, do a weekend adventure race do a, a race that uh, there are some resting points and do things easy because you have also to orienteer so you have to have skills 
to look for the maps. Uh, you have to have skills for climbing and do some rope activities. So it 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 needs more than running. And then um, you need more time. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no, no. That's, uh, that's absolutely fair. Would you say that with uh, adventure running, if someone would be interested in giving it a, a try, is it a good idea to kind of, yeah, like take one that, that has all the different activities, but throw yourself in it one weekend and just say, you know, I don't care how long it's going to take. I just mm-hmm. want to get experience trying all these things and see what I think. Would you say that's the way to do it or to say, okay, I'm going to pick a race six months down the road and these are the disciplines I need and I'm going to practice each of those before I get there. What would you, which method would you say would work better? I think for the beginning, it's interesting if you test one adventure race without many experience as, as just to test, but in a way of just finishing, keep calm, not very technical mm-hmm. because if, if it's technical, then it, it can be also dangerous for you mm-hmm. if you don't have the skills for. So an easy one that it has many different type of uh, racers because don't, don't, don't choose a one that isn't <laughs> an elite uh, one. Yeah. Look up a circuit or Choose one near nearer to your home that you know also the area that you are used to, also with the times and, and the different um, schedules. That it, it, because sometimes you go to a place that different food, different time, and also this makes you oof, it's not easy then. Yeah. Um, why not try and for sure choose the good team members. Yes. You, it's very important, very important because they can also help you in the things that you cannot arrive Mm -hmm. they can also uh, keep you calm they can also you know it it, because adventure racing it's not an individual then it's 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 a group activity and because of that you need for me it's crucial the team that you choose to race with with the same goals uh with the same fitness um and sometimes the skills are different because i have a team member that is very good in paddling and perhaps i'm very good in running but the average it's the minimum average is the same for everyone. Mm-hmm. I can't take a team member that he never get into a bike and do a five hours section biking because then we are going to the weight. He doesn't know how to change the gear and so on. So please, the team members are crucial to choose the ones. Friends, if you begin, but with some experience because if not it's like okay if you don't know how to ride the bike what are we doing here yeah yeah, exactly although you've made the thing that comes to mind to me and I'm sure for others is uh are you available for hire to as you are probably one of the best teammates ever in the ever in the history of uh adventure racing and it was so cool to watch you just not only be team captain but just to be a good teammate so are you available for hire for anyone who wants to to start adventure (laughs) racing can they can they bring you in as a teammate Although the experience may be a bit mismatched there. (laughs) I have some teams that ask me if I wanted to, but I have my teammates and I I have my my compromise with them. And they are a big family, you know. Oh, yeah, for sure. We've met each other. And also with Nathan, with Danielle, with Travis, with many races that you saw in Echo Challenge in Fiji, we know them from 17 or 20 years ago. So every year, or perhaps I've been uh, doing ultra races for 10 years and I didn't compete in adventure racing, but every year I come to uh, Colorado or California to do some ultra races and I call Danielle, I call, call Travis, I call Shane, Rebecca Rush, and we see each other. Other, like family, even mm-hmm. if we have been uh, more than 10 years that we will not, we, we were not racing together again, but it's very close, the feeling. And if the New Zealanders were not so far, <laughs> I also w- would love to visit them and, and, and see them with Christina Strode Penny also, that she was for me a uh, woof, amazing woman. So many, m- many people that you meet in adventure racing. It's a big family, and for me, racing with them or with my team, um, it would be also perfect. Yes, no problem. I love that so much. So, tell us about uh, your running background, being an, uh, a runner as well, being sponsored by uh, Ultra, making us technically teammates. So, tell us a bit about yeah. how running, yes, falls into things here. <laughs> I love running. Uh, for me, it's the discipline that I feel better, that I can push harder that I can suffer more because is the one that I feel more free and not attached to a, a machine like biking. 
I like also biking, but if you have any problem with the bike, oh, bullshit. It's like, come on, you are also a little stressed about that because in adventure racing, many things can happen in your bike. Yeah. But running are your legs, are your feet, are everything true. concerned you. And when I do ultra races, I feel really free because I can chase my pace. Uh, I can choose my pace. I, I can choose uh, where I go training, uh, which are... There's no borders. There, there, there's no because you can be okay. There's no little path, no problem in the middle of the for, in the middle of the forest. I, I cross, so there are no boundaries. You can go everywhere. If there's snow, no problem. I take mm -hmm. the material. If there's uh, raining, wrinkle. No, you don't feel that cold. You don't feel that heat. Uh, you cannot have any mechanical problem, and you can do okay. I'm tired. I walk. And if not, I have a problem. Uh, then I think it's it's a very it's a very good discipline, especially in the mountains. I am not, for example, I did comrades in South Africa. That is eighty k's yeah. by asphalt road, and I thought if I do ultra races, comrades, why not? Uh, it's only okay a pavimented road. That it was the worst <laughs> ever. Yeah. And what oh, amazing! And I said, come on, what happens? blisters, the same movement all the time. Uh, I had a contraction here in, in the ischios and, and I trained a lot because I, I did um, uh, half marathons and, and asphalt marathons to train for Cambridge, but it's completely different oh, yeah. from running and I don't want to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you found your limit within running of where you were like, this is, this is good for me. I've, <laughs> I've done what I wanted to do. And, and have you always been, how did your running start? Were you, uh, kind of following the mainstream path of doing 5k, 10k marathon, half marathon, and then kind of adventures off, or did you dive in straight into the trail running and ultra world? I did, uh, 10k's, then some half marathons. But especially, I did a lot of triathlons and duathlons. That you know, that's a combined discipline. So yeah. you train combined sports, and then this multi-sport activity made me that the running was the one that I was adapted more. That I, I, I had, for example, I did the Ironman Nice Ironman, yeah. and I was all the time 20, 25. But when I went to the the running, the marathon. I finished top 10. So I, I knew that even with swimming and biking, my my good one was the running. And even if it was a, an asphalt marathon, I had the, 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 the capacity to, to push hard and, 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 and to have more speed than the others. Even if I was non-elite, it was the first uh, good result uh, being amateur. And running for me... <clears throat> I adapt a lot and I, and I, and I love it. I love it of the way that, that you can suffer and your body also is, uh, be careful with, uh, injuries, but I have a very good knees. I have a very good structure with my ischios and, and my quadriceps, my squat. So they, my, because it, this is a, one of the things that it's important to see with your doctor of your mechanical, um, yeah. uh, stuff because they, they, they look at you and, and see if your knee is, it moves or not and and, and uh, all the the articulation all, all the it's it's good for this long distance mm -hmm. races mm -hmm. then i had a very good stability in my knees so this is very important and when i did adventure racing the disciplines of running and walking were so long so for me it was not mm, difficult to say why not an ultra race why not 100 miles if in an adventure race, it's one section, you know? So I started with triathlon, with duathlon, with some half marathons, but then I knew that uh, ultra racing, uh, I, I would be capable to finish. And it so was. Can I just clarify? So you did you say that you went to adventure racing kind of before you started doing the 100 mile and, and the really long? Okay, so then you went, okay. Just checking because I, I I thought for a second there that um you yeah okay okay that makes yeah. sense and uh you know I mentioned about ultra for both of us uh, and I just love seeing the logo kind of show up a few times they showed your your nice pink shoes multiple times throughout the race and as my teammate I was always rooting for you so just for any listeners as I now do have a um a giveaway for uh, my European ultra listeners or potential uh, European ultra listeners and I also have a 20% off coupon code which I will tell you how to go get in a minute for the listeners tell people who have maybe heard of ultra in Europe but haven't given them out a try what it is about them that you enjoy 
I like them because it makes you run better uh, because with drop zero, but I use insoles that are not drop zero. So I have a little mm. drop because mm. I'm not a, a runner. Uh, I run myself from many years, so I, I cannot change completely my, my style of running. But I know that my energy, my, my position, uh, my balance is much better better with a drop zero with an insole a little uh, and i came from hokas that hokas was oh, the, the uh, very thick uh, mm -hmm. so and i had back problems and even if they were with a good cushion um, the running was not it was a lot of uh putting your um how do you say the heel uh on the ground differently um, yeah from a heel ultra. strike is what we say yep. yes exactly and it's not it's it's not the same. So when I I asked to um, Jason Slart that was in Ultra in in uh, Hard Rock when I went there, and I asked him what do you think about Ultra shoes, and he explained me because it's the it's the way to ask people who is using it and why they are using it. Yeah. And, uh, he said mm, for me I because also he was with Hoka first. That's why I asked him mm. why you change. Okay. And then she explained me the same, uh, the way that you run, how you feel, how you recover, and also the performance, how increase the performance when you run a little better and when your economy goes better with a better run. Yeah. But I have to take an advice to the people. Uh, it takes time yeah. to adapt to Ultra. It takes, I had more than six months of problems with my calf and, and I have uh, oof, uh, contractions and because my style of running when you are over 30 years old or you have a, a style that you don't, you, it's, it's, it's not easy to move from mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So an adaptation, it was hard uh, because it was not easy, but with Olympus model, perfect. With Lone Peak, I had to be a little more aware, but with the thickest model of Ultra, uh, it was my conversion, and I am and I'm very happy. Also, it's very white in in, in the mm -hmm. front. I suffer a lot of blisters uh, during ultra races when the shoes are really close, and um, especially with me, I, I don't have a, a woman fit uh, uh, thin and, and no, I have a, a kind of white. So for me, it was perfect with with ultra shoes that my fingers were, my toes were uh, breathing more. Yeah. And I have more opportunity of, of have these um, um, swollen feet after running more than 10 hours, you know? Yeah. And then everything, everything sum ups, everything uh, have an advantage for this, for this, for this, and also the treatment. It's amazing, the team, ultra mm. team. Mm. Oh, and, yeah. and all, the, all, all the, the people related with the brand, I was feeling that when, when, when I talk with uh, with the people, with ultra people, from the beginning, mm -hmm. treatment was excellent. Yeah. And they said, Emma, I will uh, give you the shoes, but you test them. Don't say me yes or no in the beginning. Just test. Yeah. And if you feel comfortable, if you feel confident, then we can talk. But please, you have to feel good, comfortable. And I said, perfect. So you heard me say just there that uh, Emma is my ultra running teammate and I'm really excited to be on a team with Emma Roca. What a rock star to be on a team with. I have been telling you for months now about how much I am enjoying ultra about the shoes. I also know that Emma is a huge fan, loves feeling that freedom in her toes and you can too. So for my US listeners, you know every month for the rest of this year, I have been setting up a giveaway for you. I've selected a winner at random every month and you can go to the Ultra Running website, pick out any pair of shoes you want and uh, yeah, it's been really cool to, to see which ones you're choosing. I've really enjoyed getting to know which ones you have found the most interesting and, and actually most people haven't gone for the ones I would have expected, which I love that you are kind of following your own path, following your own heart. But now, as you heard me have heard me say in this episode, I am thrilled to tell you that Ultra Running Europe is also going to do a bi-monthly giveaway for my listeners. So every other month you can enter to win a free pair of shoes from ultrarunning.eu. So my UK fans and my 
the rest of Europe, friends and family, you are able to enter this giveaway now. And I, I'm just so excited about this because I've been wanting this for such a long time to be able to have something to offer people in Europe because I always felt like I was leaving people out. So now you can go to tinamuir.com forward slash ultra Europe. That's tinamuir.com forward slash ultra Europe. And you can enter to win a giveaway to win a pair every other month. And if you do that, I will send you a 20% off coupon to go to ultrarunning.eu and you can get 20% off your order. If you don't feel like you are the best person when it comes to winning things, if you don't feel like you have much luck, you can get a 20% off coupon. So you can go to tinamuir.com forward slash ultra Europe to go enter to win that. When I talk with uh, with the people, with ultra people, from the beginning, treatment mm-hmm. was excellent. Yeah. And they said, Emma, I will uh, give you the shoes, but you test them. Don't say me yes or no in the beginning. Just test. Yeah. And if you feel comfortable, if you feel confident, then we can talk. But please, you have to feel good, comfortable. And I said, perfect. That says a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Okay. So going into uh, Eco Challenge more, uh, your attitude, your humor, your approach, your kindness, um, it just, uh, it kind of shone through and you really were one of the the heroes of the of the whole, thi- whole series. <laughs> but being a mother... But it's, not fair. it's not fair, Tina, because yeah. not all the teams were there. That's true. From six, six teams... Only a few were recorded for the for the serial for the chapters. So for me, uh, I feel it's 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 not that fair because they only saw these uh, few teams, mm-hmm. but perhaps many other people can be like this. So I don't want to feel like wow, I'm 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 a little um, uh, how do you say protagonist? I don't know that the word in English. Um, every one of us that were there also had. Yes. Uh, and yes, you you were much loved. We'll leave it at that. You were much loved on the on the series. And you, it's interesting you mention that because every person I've interviewed has said at some point in their interview the same thing that this was only ten or so teams that were featured, but there were so many untold stories that were just as inspiring as the ones that were shown. So uh, it's it's important to remember that because I think for us it's like oh the rest of the people were just out there, but then. They also yes, had stories. Yes, so, they are there. Yes. yes, thank you. And but I wanted to go in to talk a bit about um, your your kids. You have you have daughters, and you ha- just children in general. Seeing you, a woman, a mother, going into events like this, what do you what do you hope that they grow up seeing and learning and thinking? And what is your advice for someone as a mother of two daughters? for teaching your girls that they can do hard things and they can be strong. What, what, what do you hope that yours have learned? Completely. I feel very proud when my kids say, wow, mom, you can do this and this and this. Exactly. It's, it's independent. If, if you are a male or a female, mm-hmm. uh, it, it doesn't have to be any, any difference. Mm-hmm. And then um, for the values, especially in our society, that it seems that it's only looked from, from a male, uh, you know, side. And I say, no, my goodness, we can do many things. But my whole life had been fighting for that. Because when I was racing uh, some marathons and ultra marathons, I had to fight for the same prize giving. When I were in adventure racing, we had to fight as a female team because my beginning was with a female team that we could as well as the others. And we had a lot of comments. Wow, you will last only two days. Wow, you will fight from with each other because the, the girls are always discussing uh, they themselves. And I said, come on, stop <laughs> telling these stupid things. So we are always fighting to show that we are there at the same. I don't want to fight against men. I don't want to fight against them. I want to fight with my for my rights. I want to fight that I, I, I need the same opportunities that the other uh, the others have. And I didn't when I was young. I was training basketball. I was playing football. I was playing tennis. And the, the court and the time that I could play, because a female uh, team, you had the last one in the in the week or the be- the worst days. And then mm-hmm. you're always saying, okay, uh, but I'm not a conformist. I, I, I just, I don't wait and, and, and say, okay, no, I fight for that. 
And yeah. I remember race in Italy. It was Kima, that it was a 60K race from all the refuge in Italy, that it's really hard and very technical. That I talked with the organization, I said, why the three first uh, males have more prize giving than the, the, the first three women that we are on the top in the world? Well, it's a tradition, I said. And then I, I just made a meeting of all the girls. I, take, I took a, a, a translator, uh, an Italian translator, and we did a letter. And we said that if the next year they didn't change the price giving, the best girls of the world didn't, would not come to that race. Mm -hmm. so, and I just said, mm -hmm, because uh, we need a respect, and then, but we have to do something. Yeah. And I don't know if it's my character or because I, I, I was born like this, but when I see something that it's not fair, um, I say, just say something because perhaps the next year they change or other girls listen to me and then they say, yes. let's come together. And, and then um, being a woman and showing that we can just do the same, the first days are, are difficult because adventure racing, the, the boys and when they are fit like you, they are more fit. They have, they have more muscles, uh, they have yeah. more testosterone. So, uh, but they have to slow down because we are a team. And I say to them, you are lucky that you have a girl in the team because then you don't burn out the first That's two days. That's true, yeah. Because you have to, your pace has to slow down. And then it makes that during these days, the girls feel better and better and better because we are a diesel and they are perhaps very gasoline. They are very <laughs> exploiting more than us. And these diesel save the teams <laughs> because then the pace is perfect for last Six, so you seven. do find that like towards the end, the women are kind of mostly coming up and the men are kind of maybe not slowing down, but kind of the women come level with them. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. My experience and yes, another team, the girls, you see them much better than many men of the team oh, of the three, four, five days. Huh. Sometimes the, the boys also want to put more heavy back stuff. Okay. They can put, they have more heavy stuff in their backpacks. But not too much, just a little more, you know. Don't be, um, don't do excess. Don't do many things because you are a man. Or you mean because... like equipment kind of stuff? They would put extras, or yeah. for example, there are some compulsory equipment that you have to to put, like a a, um, a flare or like a radio or something that is not your clothing. It's not your food. So this heavy stuff can can be split from the team members. Then it's normally men take this stuff because we, uh, even if we are trained, we are less strong when the same uh, train level of a man. So we just split and my backpack normally uh, it's less heavy than the others. Well, but during the days, if I need to put this stuff because the other team members feel bad, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's a community. We, we, we have to build a, a, a team together. And then with the girls, I love when they see, so if uh, the society says that we are the weakest, and I said, no, please don't think that. Why you are the weakest? It, it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter if you are a girl or, or, or a boy. You you are the weakest if you won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's, that's it. When I was in, into the process of being a firefighter, I have a lot of criticism about oh, you girl, yeah. Oh, you, you will not be able to carry the backpack with the uh, with the hose and everything. And I said, why not? If I have the exams to go inside and I have all, all the capability, they, they, they put my tests and, 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 I, and I pass them like you, what well, I am not able to do it. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of uh, uh, feelings from the last, last uh, centuries, you know, that the girls were only an object. And it's like, come on, please. So with that, how, I'm just trying to think of like, um, how do you kind of in your mind when people are constantly saying, oh, let it go. Like, it's not, that's not a big deal. Like, so why do you need to talk about this as a woman? Like, it's just the way things are. Like, how do you not let it kind of overtake you and just get angry all the time that it, it may seem a small deal to some male who's had everything he wants, but it, it is a big deal to you as a woman. How do you not let that kind of just make you bitter and resentful that everything is kind of 
kind of working against you in some ways, much like the kind of conversations about systemic racism that are going on right now. Um, and even, you know, Team Onyx being in in uh, Eco Challenge, making that point of uh, we want to be the first uh, all black African-American team um, to compete in this. What would you say for someone who is maybe feeling frustrated that people are constantly saying, oh, stop talking about that. It doesn't matter. Be patient. Be patient and and and, and feel really uh, uh, self confident about yourself. Uh, you know that at the end, uh, everyone will say, "Okay, uh, she has been criticized, but she's top. She's the best." So yeah. the 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 critics, the, the people who is criticizing you, is because they are very jealous or because they they see something of you that they don't Threatened. like from them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So for that, I think you have to be very well mind and um, a very well mindset about saying, okay, be mature about that. Oh, of course, you feel uh, angry sometimes and sad. Especially, I am I am driving a big truck, you know, and we arrive to a place uh, because we have a car accident or we have a, a forest fire, and when we arrive to a place, some firefighters from other uh, from, from other uh, places say. Mm, do you need help? Uh, do you want me to show you how to part? I say, did I ask you that? Mm -hmm. Or because I am a woman, you oh, uh, it's, and then you have to feel sometimes like, just say, I will do whatever I think. So, and sometimes I say, okay, uh, if you want, no problem. Uh, you can show me how to, to park it, but with no um, sadness or is their problem? It's not yours. Yeah. So if you feel that you are doing right, Take it easy. Yes. Let them go. Thank you. And then, and then what about your girls? So you said that they may say to you, um, what society says about girls and women, how much have you seen this kind of go into their brains with you being this strong role model for them, but also you're not with them 24 seven. So the rest of the time, they're just soaking in these messages. What, what are some of the things that you've noticed being a mother of girls? I always tell them I have a daughter of 14 uh, and I have the other daughter that is twin of 12. And I say to them, please, always the people have to respect you. You never have to do things or blight. You never have to do things because the other says to you. You know, you have to know all the time that you are doing because you want to do that. You are doing that because you want to. And um, I, I am at home. David, my husband, cooks, uh, do the laundry, uh, iron, do whatever. And so at, at home, we are, we are a couple that we split many things. So at home, the people, I think it's very important for the kids, especially with girls, mm -hmm. that they see uh, father and mother doing the same things, yeah. that there's no difference about that. And, and then um, if the society says things at home, they don't see that. Yes. So they have yeah. their own concept of living with a couple. And now I am, I'm a little uh, worried about how sex with teenagers are uh, related and how, how is the relationships with the boyfriend, if they have boyfriend or just friends. And I'm a little scared about um, which is the respect of the girl's body and how the boys take care about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, because they see uh, many uh, sexual content in the social media, in the YouTube, and above that, I, I, I would love that my girls um, have the self-confidence of being, mm. I have my body, I love my body, and I want all the others to respect me as a person, mm -hmm. not as a thing. And then now I am fighting about that, and I have my... Oof, uh, yeah, I guess you have to kind of, this is where you really get to see what internal messages you've ingrained in them to, to learn if it's enough to be able to have them be like, no, I'm not taking that step away from me. So yeah, I can imagine that is quite a stressful time because you, you can't do anything. You're not there in that moment. So, um, there's one important thing I want to tell you, Tina, is yeah. that, uh, don't lose the bridge between your daughters and you. Don't mm -hmm. lose this bridge of communication. Yes. So let them do whatever they want to. Don't, with a limit, of course, with <laughs> a limit. If they have to go to a party, you say at one o'clock at home, you have to put limits, of course. But don't, um, uh, no, this is forbidden. No, this is forbidden. No, because then, if it's for them forbidden, it's not the word because they will do it anyway. Yes. So 
please give them the tools, explain them everything, and then their experience will make them reconsider some situations, but give them the tools. And if they need help from the mom, especially when they have the period, when they have some relations that they don't like, when they have some problems at the school or with, the, or with friends, don't lose this bridge communication because then as a mother, you can feel really frustrated and then what happens? Yeah. <laughs> Your daughter will take counsel with, uh, with a friend, with another mom and say, no, please, I am here. So uh -huh. if you have any problem, tell me, yes. even if you think that I will be angry, tell me. That's such good advice. And that's something I'm very fearful of as well, that I, I don't want to, you know, try too hard so that then they're like, stay away from me. Exactly. Like that's too much. Exactly. So yes, thank exactly. you for that. Great advice. Okay. So switching gears a little bit, um, something you, that you, they showed you doing in, uh, Eco Challenge World's Toughest Race Fiji was you saying how important it was to have experiences with local people in Fiji. And it was so heartwarming to see you joking around, showing this kindness towards them, interacting. And you said that it was one of the most important, or I think you said the most important part, you know, forget all the racing, forget all the suffering. That was the most imp important part. Um, tell us why you felt that way. Because when you are traveling around and, and when you visit the others, uh, you are the visitor. So mm -hmm. you, you are not uh, uh, the boss of anyone and, or uh, the, uh, the main artist. No, you are there in their habitat, in their homes, and you learn a lot from them. And I've been racing more than 20 years. I've been visiting many countries and many people, and I learn a lot of them. For me, adventure racing is a the huge school the best school of, of learning how the people live and to don't criticize and to not, I don't want to judge anyone. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to see how they live and take with me this experience at home because it makes me more person and, and I have a wide uh, side of, of, of everyone and, and the problems from them are, they are completely different of our yeah. problems. And so I come back from Vietnam, I come back from Fiji, I come back from Kyrgyzstan, I come back from Tibet and and I say, our problems are stupid ones compared with some of them. That, yeah. uh, they have huge problems about, and they are happy. And when I see people that it's the poorest, I see people with uh, physical uh, problems. I see people with another type of life, but they are happy. Mm -hmm. They give you the big lesson about, please be happy, be the, do the things that you like. And yes. also I this uh, uh, when I come back and for me getting in touch with locals it's a big learning it's the oh, yeah. best school yeah it was it was really cool to see it and and uh, I think you had all the little kids around you didn't you helping with putting the your billy billy, billy billy together that was really yeah. cool to watch and really enjoyable okay so moving on to your role as team captain how do you set yourself up to keep making good and wise decisions under extreme fatigue uh, now, I want to mention that is from David, who is also living uh, in Spain, and uh, he just kind of also mentioned how important you were. So, yeah, David has that question. Well, uh, in fact, uh, being the captain and, and, and give the good decisions is the experience. But also when I have a beep, I'm very competitive. Mm -hmm. And then uh, <laughs> this is also one of my characteristics that I, I try to do as best as I can and as fast as it, it can be to, to be very efficient. But at the same time, I, I know the teammates. We know from each other for many years. I know the limits that we can have. And, and it's a way of, okay, uh, I, do, I do this decision. I take this decision, but we always talk and I respect everyone. And when some of the teammates have any mistake in orientation, it's the mistake of all the team because I took my responsibility to them. I, I just let them to do the maps because mm -hmm. if you are not, uh, um, if, if, if you don't have any confidence, take you the map and do you the, the orienteering. So you have to be all the time with humility. You have to be all the time that everyone can, can have a mistake and it's the mistake of the whole team. So don't take, and the things that are said in an adventure race when you are tired are things that are there close. So when you come back home, you cannot say to the teammate, uh, you sent me when I we were going to the Billy Billy that I was a bullshit. I don't know what, and I was very stupid. No, <laughs> the things that we are saying, but we have a character perhaps like 
being Latin uh, people that we laugh a lot. We yes. talk a lot about those dreams. We are just uh, um, explaining our uh, stories. Well, in fact, we have in, e in Echo Challenge, we had the micro with us, yes. but they didn't use the, the things that we were talking about. And sometimes I had to say to my teammates, Shut up, I have a micro because we were talking about things that were a little uh, spicy. And I said, be careful. <laughs> but you did, you were aware of that. I feel, I feel like at a certain point were you, just, you, you were still kind of cognizant of the microphone or were you able to, I feel like I'd be no. so tired that I couldn't even like register that that no, was still I there. I was not thinking about the microphone only with uh, some special comments that the teammates yes. made from other girls or from other parts of the, of the race. So I had to say, yeah. <laughs> but if not, you were just racing and yes. just focused on that. And the decisions that you take are the decisions from the experience and also knowing that your teammates will be a, agree with that. Mm -hmm. So I never um, lose the respect for them. I am always uh, taking care of them at the same time that they are taking care of me. Mm -hmm. And I never forget to be uh, a big charge for them. I never forget that I have to take care of myself because I don't want to be the problem of the team. Yes. So for them, it's very comfortable to have a teammate that they know that above all, she will take care of herself first. Yeah. And then uh, they don't have to take me all the time and asking me, are you okay? No, they know that if I have, if I have a problem, I will tell them. Yeah. But if not, I just uh, do the things uh, as best as, as I can. Yeah, and and, and on, that kind of leads in nicely to the, well, it wasn't a nice situation, but the, the question of um, swimming through that 8K of cold water, your team definitely suffered more than on the, t on the TV series, at least, the other teams. And it seemed you in particular were, uh, in the way they edited it maybe, were ready to kind of quit at, at that moment. How close were you or, and, and what were you saying to yourself in that moment when you were really struggling? It's very hard because mm -hmm. uh, cold, uh, especially I, I feel bad when, when I have cold. Some races uh, with cold weather, uh, my energy goes completely down. And then I, when your energy is down, uh, you don't um, think properly. You are like, uh, it's not possible. They said, two little swim pools. We had to swim only two little pools. What happens here? The first pool was 500 meters. What happens? The water is 14 degrees. Uh, we don't have neoprene because they said there were only two pools of swimming. And then you say, no way, you are tired. You were pushing hard because we had a, a very bad mistake before of orienteering and then we lost one hour and a half and we wanted to rush harder. So our body was stressed and, and really tired. And then the cold water came and I said, I was swimming. I said, not possible, it's not possible. All my teammates a little uh, ahead of me. And I said, no, no, no. And then what I thought, and it, it, it can be very stupid, but it was my feeling. I said, okay, bear grills. What said in some series about cold and how do you cover, cover your head, uh, cover. And then I said, okay, I have my gore inside my backpack. Yes. Uh, I am completely wet. But let's cover, let's do some changes that your mind can have a little mm -hmm. uh, a spike of, of bright light yes. of, of this nightmare, you know? And these tiny things that you can do at that moment makes you a little different that says, okay, a little more, a little more, a little more. Mm -hmm. And then you arrive to the teammates, then you just put your elbow with them. You just, uh, you need them yeah. in that moment. You need the teammates and the energy, and, and especially with Yuka and Albert, they made me, me and Fran, uh, finish that section. Mm -hmm. Because they said, we are a pack, we have to continue, we cannot stop here. And also the experience of, if you stop, you die, because yeah, you're very sure. cold now. Yeah. And then it was a surviving uh, uh, feeling. And also it had a a another change during that section, that it was looking at Fran. When I saw Fran worse than me, I said, Emma, you have to change. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to take the energy from I don't know where, <laughs> but you have to keep on going, even crying. We have to keep on going because Fran is worse. Mm -hmm. So now we have to be a, we have to put the big heart and and, and be strong for him. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that really helps, doesn't it? Yeah, yes, yeah, focusing on saying. someone else. 
Yeah. And so speaking of Fran, as the team captain, as Fran took a turn for the worse, how did that feel for you as the team captain being unable to to do anything to to help him? Or, I mean, I'm talking about once you got to the tent, you were unable to do anything, but knew you were the team captain. Uh, how did that feel? Even if you're a team captain, we, we are team captains in different parts of the race. So mm-hmm. I don't feel that I'm the matriarca, that I'm, okay. I'm the boss of the team. No, I don't have this yeah. feeling. Everyone has his his uh, position and in, in different situations, everyone can, can be the team captain. Mm-hmm. Team captain is an I don't care, okay, that I, I am the, the, the face of the team and everything. But during the race, the four of us are team captains. Mm-hmm. So when I arrived to that tent, my team captain in that moment was Yuka and Albert, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and they, and, and they just uh, followed the situation and they just kept on going and, and, and took a, a pace in the middle of the jungle just to avoid the last swimmings. So for them uh, was the way to save the team. And for me, they were in that moment. So I felt bad for Fran, but also for me, I was in that point also a little selfish about if he has to recover and has to stop perfect because I will yeah, use I it also it. for mm-hmm. And to take uh, energy again and try to finish because the cold completely kills you, mm-hmm. kills all your energy. And and then uh, it, it was a, a tandem, you know, me and Fran, like, let's let's uh, rest and, and see what happens after eight hours. Yeah, well, I, I guess thank you to, to your teammates for kind of help holding you two together there, because that's got to be quite tough on them, having half of the team struggling uh, in, yes. in the same moment rather than it being at different points. So. I'm thankful for them as well during that moment. Yeah. No, just a, a theory about that. I have a, I have yeah. my theory about that. When a team quits, it's because at the same time, Everyone's, everyone yeah. have a low moment. Yeah. But only if one of the team members have a high moment and the others have a low moment and he's a, 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 have a good team spirit and he has the respect of all the team members, the, this only person can push the team mm. up and not let them quit. But if the 14 members, if we had been um, hypothermic, the four of us, we could, for yeah. sure, we we would ask for help and, and stop. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, getting on to the final questions that I ask everyone. Um, well, the first one, I think we kind of know the answer. Did you, did you ever think your team wouldn't make it? Did wouldn't you, make it? Yeah. In that moment, did you think... <sighs> okay. Only when Fran was in the tent because it, it was a medical mm-hmm. mm, situation. So you cannot control a medical uh, diagnosis and we don't we didn't know at that moment. Yes. So it was the, the point that, yes. who, who knows? Right. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and I think we already know the answer to this. Hardest moment for you? <laughs> the first big swim of 500 meters and saying... This is not a, a small pool. <laughs> so what is next? Yes. What what was the, what wants the organizer? Uh, mm, mm, let us suffer. Uh, with which will be the limit? And it was a very wide yes. limit. It was very. Hard. So in that moment, you were hoping the race director would walk in front of you, and you can be like, "Hey, get back here right now! <laughs> Come here!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what was your greatest fear going into this? Uh, it was uh, some accident. Mm-hmm. For me, uh, doing adventure racing, it's very easy to have a, a very bad accident. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, we I went to Kyrgyzstan in in the right Goloas and uh, and the girl was dead there. So mm-hmm. they can be very bad accidents. And for me, uh, my my fear was that any one of us, of our teammates, had a bad accident, especially when you have a lot of uh, sleepy moments that you are tired with the bike that. We were really fast going downhill. They said, "Be careful about crashing," you know. And this, it was my my fear. Yeah, for sure, understandable. And what about your greatest moment in the race? The greatest moment is when you arrive to the end and you know <laughs> that you are not going to walk again for minimum twelve hours, <laughs> and you could, but you are going to sleep as much as you can. Yes. You can have a good shower and you can eat fruit and some fresh veggies. Mm. This was my best. Yes, fair enough. And finally, <laughs> uh, have you watched it back? Uh, and if so, which team inspired you the most? And I'm going to add on, uh, after you've explained that, if you want to give a team that wasn't featured a shout out as well, you can do that too. Well, in fact, my 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 
favorite team was the Travis, Mace, Danelle, and Shane. For me, they are a family, and seeing them there, well, in fact, in the middle of the race, I was thinking a lot about them. And, you know, you have the feeling about, wow, Travis and Mace and the last race of, of father and, and, and son. Yeah. And I know them, I know them from many years. So um, I was constantly thinking about this team and for me it was the best inspiration. Yes. And and that kind of came across uh, very clear for, for, for I think everyone, how much they, they meant and especially you being great friends with them that I can imagine that was really inspirational for you in those tough moments of knowing what they were able to do and how far they managed to get um, exactly. with things going exactly. wrong. Yeah, it exactly. Was, it was amazing to watch. And I will encourage listeners that I do have um, an episode with uh, Travis and Mace, uh, I think is coming out next week. Uh, yes, next week. So be sure to tune in. Tell, yes. Tell them that I love them. Tell them that I love them. I will. I will for sure. <laughs> well, I'm getting in touch. Yesterday he was calling me by WhatsApp. So um, we are getting in touch. That's very, so good to hear. All right, Emma, where can people go find out more about you or follow along in the future? Well, in fact, I'm I'm finishing my my new website um, www.emmarocca.com. So I think at the end of of the month we'll be ready, and I think it will be a website that they can find many things about me, not only being a sport woman or my personal firefighter and family, but they will see my scientific uh, mm. part and my entrepreneur. Mm. So it will be a very nice web that they can learn things yeah. that I want doing i look forward to seeing it yeah and i i Thank that you. will be live by the time this goes out because it's not coming up before the end of the month so i will definitely encourage people to go uh do that and remember to go to tinamuir.com forward slash ultra europe to enter to win a free pair of ultra shoes uh every other month for the uh ongoing future Emma, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate you and just being this bright shining light. And uh, thank you for all that you've done for, for women and girls. Thanks a lot, Tina. My friends, if you have a minute and you could leave a review on your favorite podcast player, Apple Podcasts, aka iTunes, Stitcher, Overcast, Pocket Class, Spotify, or whatever else podcast player you use to listen to this podcast, or if you would subscribe to this podcast, you will help me get out in front of new runners to make our tribe even bigger and even better. It might not seem like you as one person can make a difference, but really it helps a lot. And it shows me you appreciate the hard work I put in for those. Thank you so much. I told you she's amazing, isn't she? What a hero. And I hope you will go follow along with her in the future because I certainly look forward to to getting to know her more. And I, I feel like I developed a friendship with her after that episode. We talked for quite a while afterwards and uh, just, just an incredible human being. So I am excited you got to know Emma today. And uh, be sure if you are a UK or a European listener that you go enter that giveaway. You are going to be able to enter to win a free pair of ultra shoes every other month from ultrarunning.eu. You can just go to ultrarunning.eu, pick out a pair of shoes, and then if you win, you can get them for free. Or if you do not think your luck is up to standard, you can always just use my 20% off coupon, which has been created just for my listeners. And for both of those things to go get that coupon and to enter that giveaway, you can go to tinamuir.com forward slash ultra Europe. That's tinamuir.com forward slash ultra Europe. You can also go to the show notes for today. We'll have a link in there, um, as well as other things that Emma and I talked about, which you can find at tinamuir.com forward slash episode 215 to one five and next week we are going to have travis and mark macy uh, who emma talked about right at the end here there mark and travis were on this amazing journey in this eco challenge uh mace now has alzheimer's this is probably going to be his last adventure race and he did it with his son travis and it just it probably was the most inspiring story of the entire series for everyone in that sense just because of what they were doing about Mark trying to prove a point that Alzheimer's doesn't have to stop you living life even though it has many many challenges so be sure to check in for that one next Monday and we are going to have another episode on Friday I am looking forward to hearing what you think about that one I will see you then thank you so much thanks for listening to the running for real podcast 
Be sure to check out TinaMuir.com for show notes and even more helpful running information.